the format of the robot. Okay, to begin with, this little tale I'll be telling you, just sit back, relax, grab your junk food, and listen. Because, this is gonna be rather of an interesting one, to put it this way. My name is Alex, I'm going to start with a certain topic. A topic is known as a familiar face we all know and love. It is a 1999-2019 long-running animated series named SpongeBob SquarePants. I know, I know, I get that Steven Hillenburg, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, had recently died last year. I was very unlucky the other day, because my eyes and mind ingested what appeared to be an unreleased episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, so allow me to tell you all about it. I've been driving to work and back to the house to pay my bills, do my chores, and cook my food. I sat on the sofa, thinking about all of the pain of being an adult. But then, something sparkled into my brain. A piece of information that I should just enjoy watching a little cartoon. I've always loved cartoons, especially as a kid. My favorite animated series out of all of them I've watched was SpongeBob SquarePants. With a gentle smile on my face, and a few tears of joy streaming down my cheeks, I would turn my television on and look for a channel full of cartoons and nothing else. Only cartoons, and always cartoons. I welcomed my childhood back to my mind, and never wanted to let go of it. Inside, deep down inside myself, I hugged my childhood. I had an amazing childhood. I played lots of sports with my dad, laughing and playing with my friends on our skateboards, and to my happiness, cartoons, when SpongeBob SquarePants wasn't released just yet. It was until 1999, that I just discovered the cartoon itself. When it was on, I instantly fell in love with it, and my love for this cartoon had never even bothered to die off. Back in the present, I couldn't find any interesting cartoons to watch. I switched the channel to Nickelodeon to see if SpongeBob SquarePants was on. But, I was caught off guard, when I saw that the Loud House was on. I grew bored of the channel flipping, so I turned my television off and lay the remotes down. I sat on the couch, for what felt like minutes, hours, or even an eternity. I checked my watch and saw it was 3.6 PM. I instantly had an idea. I looked outside and saw a little parking lot with a yard sale, full of boxes, toys and such. I stepped outside, and meandered over to the yard sale, with a very kind young lady running it. I greeted the woman and took my pick. There I saw, was a DVD cartridge with Spongebob box art, claiming it has lots of full episodes. Seeming like it was good enough to purchase, I took out my wallet, and gave the lady a decent amount of money. I took my chance and returned to my shelter. As soon as I turned on my television, things went as I wasn't expecting them to. The selection screen was an underwater view, the background was in black and white, with a few bubbles that read the following, episode selection, meet the staff, and extras. I selected the first option, and the television took me to an image of SpongeBob's face, with episodes like Rock Bottom, Karate Choppers, Naughty Nautical Neighbors, Employee of the Month, I Was a Teenage Gary, SB129, and Squid's Visit. Then I saw an episode title with no image called, Retired. This left a confusion bubble in my mind, and I had the opportunity to start it up. Once I did, the first thing I knew was just a black screen. Then it cut to a view of Bikini Bottom. No intro. This was weird, so I watched it. The camera faded into bubbles to SpongeBob's house. There wasn't any music, and it showed the interior of the pineapple house. The living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom were the first things I see, before I even saw SpongeBob. They were dirty, dusty and ruined. Then it showed SpongeBob's room, and the first character seen was SpongeBob. He woke up from bed, with crusty eyes filled with eye buggers. He rubbed them off, and put his clothes on, ready for work. He ran outside, saying his famous phrase, I'm ready! in a loop, until he arrived at the Krusty Krab. Once he got there, he greeted Squidward, his grumpy ill-tempered neighbor, at the cash register as usual. SpongeBob served up as many orders as possible, just laughing with pleasure to see as many happy customers as possible. Suddenly, when the camera zoomed out when SpongeBob exits the kitchen, he saw that the customers were gone. 
His happy expression wasn't as happy when he saw what went wrong. Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob's boss, would start chewing him out obnoxiously. Squidward joined Mr. Krabs as he chewed him out as well, making SpongeBob sadder and sadder. Mr. Krabs ordered SpongeBob to leave the Krusty Krab as he had forlornly left the two double doors. He turned to the camera and said, Don't you just hate it when this just happens to you? This in particular was relatable, but luckily, I still have my sweet awesome job. The episode continued with SpongeBob going into town, and for some reason, everyone started to act very friendly toward him. This cheered him up a smidge. Feeling pleased, he became social with the people of the town. As I thought the episode could get any better, boy was I ever incorrect. The people of Bikini Bottom started to fade away slowly. SpongeBob would look around cautiously at what was happening. Once they disappeared, SpongeBob fell to his knees and started crying softly. Still no music, only what sounded like a church bell striking noon. He lay flat on the ground, crying in emotional agony. This went on for what felt like several minutes, listening to that heartbreaking sob of SpongeBob's. The usual bubbles that transitioned from one scene to another would make me glue my eyes to a different scene. This time, the scene contained a very lonely SpongeBob walking back to where his house was located. SpongeBob walked up to Patrick's rock and he would knock on it. Nothing happened. So he squeezes himself under the rock in an attempt to find Patrick. Either he could be sitting on his sand couch, watching television, or just doing whatever Patrick does. However, what I was expecting wasn't what I wanted it to be. When SpongeBob found Patrick, he was nothing but a rotting pile of bones and dry dead flesh. SpongeBob's tear glands release more tears, due to the death of his friend. He leaves the rock and goes to see Squidward. He calls out to Squidward, with a depressed tone, mumbling. Squidward? SpongeBob stepped front inside the interior of the Tiki house. Squidward was there, with a cynical expression on his face. He emotionlessly asked SpongeBob what he wanted from him. Then the camera cuts to SpongeBob, who informs Squidward that nobody else was there to be around him. Squidward would face Bob, and he just tells SpongeBob to leave his house and go see if Gary is wanting to play. SpongeBob followed the order, and this is when things got weird, as SpongeBob stepped foot into his home. He checked around for Gary, only to find his shell. He looked inside. Gary was not in the shell. The screen faded to darkness, with just plain white text in the normal font. Two hours later, SpongeBob went into his bedroom, and he just laid down on his back, on the bed. He stared at the ceiling anxiously, with visible tears in his eyes. Could this day get any worse? SpongeBob asked himself, and boy, things did get worse as time gradually went by. The only music heard in the background was a low-pitched ambient humming tune, as SpongeBob lay in his bed somberly for a good 30 seconds. He sat up and faced the camera with a miserable look on his face. He faced away, as he would go straight downstairs, and walked out of the pineapple house. He had enclosed eyes, with tears streaming down his cheeks. The screen transitioned through bubbles to show the crusty crab. And for some reason, it looked just off. The clam pole was broken, with the top parts missing and snapped off, and the treasure chest-shaped restaurant itself looked moldy and uncolored. The camera fades into the interior of the crusty crab. The double doors would open, revealing a square shadow. SpongeBob stepped into the restaurant, as the camera cut to show his face. He had no sign of any expression or emotion. The screen suddenly began to flicker, like an old VHS tape, for some reason, causing it to show SpongeBob standing in a dark corner, with a dimly lit light bulb above him. He stared down at the wooden floor, just crying hopelessly due to the loneliness he was not used to coping with. This lasted for a good few minutes, as SpongeBob just sat hopelessly in the same corner, after he stood there for a decent amount of time. He looked outside of the window, as the camera cuts to the window he was staring outside from. Outside of the left side of the crusty crab, was a dark figure. The figure was a shadowy humanoid, whose identity remains unknown, and it was twitching immensely, followed by the sound of a loud droning buzz in the background. The figure would screech loudly, making the episode cut to red static for at least five seconds, before returning to the scene with SpongeBob, sitting in the same corner as before. 
This time, he was barefoot, and his feet caused him to push holes into the front side of the box. His eyes were bloodshot and crusty, and there are visible eye buggers. Dark blood and feces were on the walls and floor, and next to SpongeBob was a rotting bloated corpse of sandy cheeks, and behind him was the dark humanoid creature. I almost gagged when I saw that scene, just about ready to cough up vomit. I desperately tried to hold it back, but I couldn't. I threw up on the floor, because the scene was just that nauseating and unpleasant to look at in general. A red claw appeared on screen, presumably Mr. Krabs's, because it looked too similar, and it was too dark to see what kind of color it was. Once the claw was completely in the shot, the screen started to glitch like crazy, before it cuts to a close-up of SpongeBob's face. The shot showed his face going into a gasping fit for water, which I might add, that sea animals cannot breathe there. Maybe it was the claw forcing SpongeBob out of the water, and it restrained him, not even letting him move around or go back into the water. The scene just focused on SpongeBob's face, gasping for water. For a split second, the shot showed the island, where the intro pans down into the water and to show SpongeBob's house, only it was just in black and white. Then it showed SpongeBob's face again, showing him just still suffering. SpongeBob stopped thrashing around and gasping, only causing him to stop breathing, his tongue hanging out of his mouth, and roll his eyes into the back of his head. The camera got back into the shot of the Krusty Krab, and it showed the employee of the month board. The screen zoomed into a picture frame of SpongeBob, with a black marker scribbled all over his eyes. Under the picture frame, red, retired. And then fade to a black screen with white text, saying, SpongeBob, you're fired. The screen cut to a still shot of a dark room with Mr. Krabs, cracking a wide menacing grin on his face. On the wall, was SpongeBob's suffocated and dried out corpse. His eyes were closed, and his arms were nailed against the right side of where Mr. Krabs was standing. Then, the screen faded to pitch black, of nothingness, and darkness. The episode ended shortly afterward with a mouthless SpongeBob, as I turned off the television, ejected the disc, and put it back into the DVD box from where it came from. I closed the box, and I just put it right under the television screen. I sat on the couch for a few good minutes, just wondering what I had even just watched. What have my eyes even ingested? I rubbed my eyes, trying to get these clips out of my head. They were just that traumatizing. That's all I know, and I can't tell you anything else. Who knows what would happen to the DVD box. I'll have to keep it hidden at all costs. And no, I can't show you any screenshots, because I don't even have a camera. Goodbye. This is Alex, signing out. Update, November 14th, 2019. A guy named James Cuthbertson, found the DVD box in my house, took it home, inserted it into his PlayStation 3, and took two screenshots of it. I'm gonna have to thank James, for taking the two screenshots for me, 